Hello, everybody. Here's another installment of Biology in the Basement. Um, uh, you teach the class edition, I guess we'll call this. Uh, we're leaving it up to Jane and Nick. Last time uh, we had Bailey and Emily. Shout out to them for doing a good job for their slideshow. So now we're going to hear from Jane and Nick, and they're going to talk about echinoderms, right? That is the next one on your list. If you're going in order, I covered bacteria, protists. Uh, Emily and Bailey did cnidarians. We are on to echinoderms. So we will have a lecture by them. So let's get started. Of course, we need a fact of the day so we can get started. And here it is. In March of 2017, researchers were given fragments of Hitler's teeth. And they found that Hitler definitely died in 1945 from taking cyanide and from a bullet to put all those conspiracy theories to rest. In case you didn't know, uh, many Nazis fled to South America uh, and they think that uh, Hitler was one of them where he faked his own uh, suicide and fled to South America with the rest of the uh, Nazis who couldn't really live in uh, uh, Germany anymore after they lost World War II. So um, finally in 2017, some Russian researchers put that myth to rest. So there you go. One less conspiracy theory out there for you, Spencer. Okay, so let's hear about echinoderms. As you can see, they were nice enough to highlight in yellow the words that you're supposed to write, right? Like multicellular and internal skeleton. Those are good, simple terms to use to fit in those small squares that you have to write. Um, echinoderms are animals, right? Echinoderm just simply means um, spiny skin, right? Derm meaning skin. Okay, so... Uh, we have here their classification slide where they are eukaryotes in their domain, their animals uh, in their kingdom, and then that is where they sit, right? They have um, a phylum as their group, and so there are classes which they've included their subgroups here as well. Good job. All right. On to some other basic characteristics that you can write in your slideshow, right? So for, are they vertebrates, invertebrates, uh, single multicellular? They have those terms, as well as all the way down towards the end, uh, you would write, they are cold-blooded, right? Where they don't um, have blood, technically, as you can see in this water vascular system but they do respond to the temperature of their environment, making them cold-blooded. Um, a neat adaptation, right, that they mentioned here is what is called the water vascular system. The cnidarians have something similar to that where they just kind of suck in uh, water and uh, let it flow through, but their water vascular system is much more complex. And so you can actually write water vascular system to cover respiration and circulation so um, and even um, really digestion but we'll get to that in a minute um, so yeah circulatory and respiratory system you can just put the water vascular system for both of them here are their different forms that you'll find most of the time when you think of echinoderms, you do think of your sea stars. Um, but there are also cool things like sand dollars, sea lilies, sea urchins, and these creepy sea cucumbers. Where's their habitat? Pretty much all marine, right? Uh, which means salt water. Um, but that is... Uh, yeah, that's that's it for every single one. It's crazy to think that an entire phyla exists in just one type of habitat, which is salt water. But that's where life began, so it makes sense. 
Okay, so we've got uh, diet and habitat. So here is the diet side. Uh, they are pretty interesting. If you're ever bored on the internet, um, you can watch a um, uh, uh, sea star just crack open a clam and just suck out the inside. It's pretty gross. Anyways, <clears throat> they eat a lot of different things, mostly other uh, organisms. They have a really interesting mouth and stomach that kind of works together. Sometimes their stomach just goes right inside of the body of the clam and digests it, weirdly enough. Um, and then they will use those enzymes in their stomach to digest and then release their prey. So for digestive system, I would just put enzymes. Uh, movement is pretty cool. They use their water vascular system for movement along with their tube feet. Uh, for their nervous system, right? Sensory organs are another set of slides. Uh, they don't have a brain, so to speak. They have this nerve ring. This is a nice slide that they used here. And what's called a nerve net. So that's what I would say, um, or radial nerves. As you can see, they're coming out like rays. Um, so you would say they have a nerve ring with... Um, Ner you know, radial nerves. They, they summed it up better than I could. Um, as far as what are their senses, they have that whole orientation thing. They know up and down when they're in the water, as well as light. Um, they can also sense different things like, obviously, temperature and pressure in the water. So that would be included in all of those. So we already got cold-blooded and warm-blooded. On to reproduction. They are egg layers. They um, <coughs> have external fertilization, and so then the 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 eggs are opened live. So um, I guess it's kind of a half and half egg laying live young. So um, I would put both egg laying, live young kind of hybrid. They grow up on their own, meaning they are not cared for, and nor are they nourished with milk. Um, here we have some examples of some species. Sea urchins um, will watch this video another time, um, but here are some of the echinoderms that are actually a threat to coral reefs because coral reefs are a living thing and they consume them. Here are some other great facts. Um, they, move very, they move very slowly, which is also cool. Um, they have a lot of importance in the ecosystem itself as far as being decomposers mostly and um, how the other things live there. Uh, so they, they may seem like a small thing to you, but when it comes to the ocean, they are kind of a big deal. So, very kind of them, right, to uh, put this back up here for you to see. They are multicellular invertebrates with an, um, I wouldn't really call it an internal skeleton, but they do have this you know, cal calciferous or whatever, um, calcified skeleton. So we got to give it some kind of name so we can say it's an internal skeleton. Um, and enzymes, right, that's all you have to really put for their stomach. And they move by the tube feet in the water vascular system, eye, some other sensors, uh, depending on the species, since this is a whole phylum of living things. But they are cold-blooded. I would say egg-laying live young hybrid because the eggs are out there, they get fertilized, and then they grow up. So it's kind of a weird half-and-half half situation. And then they got the rest of them. So good job, uh, everybody there. That was what Nick and 
Jane. So that covers the echinoderms, and I'll be back with things like mollusks and worms. All right, take care.